Hey guys, Slink here with another tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be explaining and demonstrating every single new feature that has been added in Ableton 10.1 as quickly as possible. So the public beta just got released today, let's check it out. So the first thing to really talk about is how do you get the beta? I know you guys are really stoked to try out Ableton 10.1 beta, so I've put a link in the description and just click that link and then scroll down to here and then hit that sign up button and just go through the process of signing up. It's really easy. So here we are in the beta. Uh, this is version 10.1 B. 11 i think b12 is out now but this is the one that i got sent a few weeks ago and i was reading through the patch notes and i'm really hyped about some of the new features so i'm going to order this feature list in order of how hyped i am about them <laughs> now you guys probably know how much i like side chaining but don't you hate it when you side chain something to your kick for example like this I just got a sub bass playing under a kick and it's being side chained with this compressor here. Don't you hate it how you can't freeze the track? You've got to do something like a dodgy workaround, like put it in a group and then put the side chain on the group and then you can freeze it. Like, why can't I just freeze it? Well, in the new update, you totally can just freeze it. Check it out. I've got a some chords being side chained to the kick. This sub bass is also being side chained to the kick. Sounds like this. And look, you can just freeze it. It just works now. But the interesting thing to note is while it's frozen, you can still copy it around. And over here, we don't have any kicks, so it shouldn't be side chaining, right? But it is still side chaining because the way I guess this works is when you freeze it, it takes into account when the side chaining is actually happening and then it prints it down onto the file that it basically renders for that channel. So if I unfreeze this now, and then play this section you can see that there's no side chaining but over here there is side chaining so just something to note if you're going to be freezing channels and then sending them to friends to collab on just make sure that you've got all your side chain triggers in the right spots before you freeze the channel remember when ableton 10 came out and everyone was so hyped about wavetable until they realized that you can't drag your own samples in to use as a wavetable well with the new update now you can so here's a sample of me saying funky funky and i'm just going to drag that right in boom funky. So cool. And this raw button up here, if you turn that on, it maintains the same kind of volume across the entire wavetable that was contained in the original file. You can see when I say key and funky, it's a little bit quieter. But I think it sounds way better with the raw button off. So cool, finally, Ableton 10.1 now supports VST3, which is really cool. If you go into your options and go to the plugins tab, you can set it up here. Once you set it up, you'll have a folder inside of your plugins folder called VST3 and all your VST compatible plugins will be in there. And you might be thinking, yeah, whatever, I've got VSTs for days and my VST2s work fine. What's the difference? Well, one thing to note that I've noticed, as you can see here, I have a VST2 version of Neutron and a VST3 version of Neutron on two different channels here. And I've mapped and I've mapped the frequency of the first band here and on the order automation lane on the VST2 version, you can see you just get like a generic number that doesn't mean anything. What's the point of that? But on the VST3 version, look at this, you can actually see the value that you're adjusting in Hertz, which is the value that we really want to be seeing here, especially for an EQ. So that's really, really cool. And this isn't just cool for us guys that write music in Ableton. It's also really cool for the developers that create the plugins that we all love and use all the time. So if you go over to the Steinberg website, you can read more about the VST3 framework that these plugins are built upon. And there's a bunch of different features that are included in the new VST3 framework that give developers more freedom with how they create their plugins. I mean, there's improved performance. Basically, it turns the CPU on and off depending on whether the plugin has audio traveling through it or not. So that saves on CPU, very, very cool. Multiple dynamic IOs. Any VST3 plugin has the potential to be surround sound capable. Resizable edit windows. 
can't complain about that. I would love to be able to resize my plugin windows and the VST3 framework makes it a lot easier for developers to implement that. Multiple MIDI inputs and outputs. I don't even know what you would use that for, but that sounds really cool. And audio inputs for VST instruments. And that's gonna make third-party vocoder plugins, for example, to be a lot easier to use in Ableton. And of course, 64-bit processing. So I'm really excited to see what my favorite plugin developers will do. Now that Ableton has released support for VST3, are we gonna see more VST3 plugins being released? Are they going to have all these cool features? I don't know, but I, I do know for a fact that developing under the VST3 framework is a lot easier compared to the VST2 framework, especially when it comes to working with the graphical user interface. So I feel like a lot of plugin developers will be moving towards VST3. Speaking of automation, there's been a lot of really cool automation features that have been added in Ableton, allowing us to do some really cool and creative things. But the one thing that I'm really excited about is editing the values of them with your keyboard. So let's say I'm doing a pitch band like this and and then I realize, oh, I want this to be back to zero. You've got to like hold shift and try and nail it. But now you can just right click and go edit value and type the number that you want. There's also a bunch of really cool curves that you can use. So if you select an area like this, for example, and then right click, you can insert a shape. And there's a bunch of different shapes to choose from. So there we go. We've got a sine wave. Let's put uh, another shape here. This one's kind of like a attack decay sustain release sort of curve, which is really nice. It could make transient shaping your drums if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of it. It could make it really easy. So this is really cool. And if you want to have a lot of sine waves, you can just put one in like this and then duplicate it. And now you've got like a big sine wave. Also, if you select an area, you get a bunch of little handles in the corners and on the edges. So now you can drag all the automation down in one go. You can also squish it or expand it and you can drag the corner up to do some weird stuff like this. And this is really cool. If you then drag the other corner down, you can reverse it. So <laughs> I don't know what that's gonna sound like with an auto filter frequency being automated like that, but I just like having these options, you know? And it's great to just be able to just throw a shape in, especially these ramps. There's so many times when I just wanna automate like a filter on a white noise, just going up like that. So quick to just add a ramp. Done. Recording automation with your MIDI controller or your Ableton push or whatever you like to use is really fun and it's a good way to just quickly sketch out an idea. But if you wanted to then go in and edit that idea, it's kind of difficult because there's so many nodes to deal with. Like let's say we wanted this curve to go down a bit further like that. You know, first I've got to delete all these nodes and then make a curve, right? Well, not anymore. <laughs> you can select the entire automation and right click and go simplify envelope and that will just take out all the unnecessary nodes and kind of approximate what you were going for with curves. So we can zoom in now and just adjust it like this. Boom, that's exactly what I wanted. I love this addition, it's great. So let's say you're working on a song and you just wanna do something simple with an equalizer like boost the highs a bit or take out the lows. You know, you drag in an EQ8 and it's a little bit overkill. There's like way too many options here and you just want something simple. Or maybe you're a DJ that uses Ableton in a live setting and you want to be able to map just three knobs like you would on a DJ mixer to some simple EQs. Well, boom, channel EQ. <laughs> it's really simple. You want to take out 80 hertz? Done, click the button. You want to boost the highs or lows? You just turn these knobs. Or maybe you want to add a little bump in the middle somewhere. You can easily set that up. So channel EQ, it's pretty simple. It's really small and lightweight. I think it'll be handy for mostly the live performers that use Ableton in a live setting, but I like it, it's cool. So it's the same kind of deal with Echo. Echo is a little bit overkill sometimes, and sometimes you just want to do something simple. You know, this plugin does everything, and sometimes you just want to do a couple of things. So you'll probably be reaching for a a simple delay or a ping pong so i'll just grab one of those oh right they've been combined into one plugin called delay which i think is a great idea you've got the ping pong button there so you can ping pong left and right and there's even some awesome features like nudging the left and rights by percentages just like in the echo plugin and there's also a modulation section. So if you set up a nice filter, you can set the rate on this LFO and then apply that to the filter. So the filter will be wiggling back and forth as it's echoing.
You can also change the time, uh, which will be how often it delays. And right now we're in repitch mode. So as the time changes, it repitches the sound to match, but you can change it to fade or jump. I personally like repitch mode. There's also a freeze button here. You got your dry wet and the feedback amount, which goes all the way up to 95%. It sounds really great. I love this plugin. And I said it before when I did the echo video, but I'll probably never use simple delay or ping pong again. And that's even more true now. <laughs> They've added a lot of really awesome hotkeys that'll help you just navigate around your project, zooming in and out and that kind of thing. So the main ones is the Z and the X key. If you make a selection and push the Z key, you'll zoom in on that selection. And then if you push the X key, you'll go back to where you were. So. <laughs> it's pretty handy if you just want to zoom in on like a breakdown or a drum roll or something and check it out. So the plus and minus keys still zoom in and out on your project, which is really cool. But now if you hold alt on Windows or option on Mac, you can change the size of a channel. Same goes with the automation lanes. You can just hold alt and change the size of it. Pretty nice. The W and H keys are really cool and I kind of just think of them as height and width. And they're also MIDI mappable up here. So if you push the W key, it shows you the entire project from beginning to end. This is the end marker right there. And then if I push it again, I'm back to where I was. And the H key distributes the height of all your channels across your entire project. See, everything is the same size, which is really cool. And then you can push it again to go back to how it was before you push the button. So let's say that you're deep into automation lane mode and you're doing a lot of editing and stuff like that. And you just want to clean up the edge of something. Normally you'd have to push A to go out of automation mode and then change a clip fade. But now you can just hold down the F key and the clip fades show up temporarily. And then when you let go of the F key, they disappear again. So that's pretty cool. You can definitely speed up your workflow if you're like chopping stuff up and then fading it, you know? Oh, that's good. It looks like um, Ableton just automatically updated itself while I was recording this video, which is great because one of the shortcut keys was not working, but now it works, so everything's all good. Basically, if you have a channel selected, you can push S and it solos that channel. You can use the keyboard up and down keys to solo and just listen to different tracks on their own. The U key kind of stands for unfold. So if you have a channel selected, you can push the U key and it will fold it or unfold it, which is really cool. Same goes for groups. And if you press Alt U or Option U on Mac, you can unfold and fold everything. When I'm working on a really huge project that has like 350 channels, this overview thing at the top can get to be pretty big. So I used to just go to view and hit overview to turn it off, but now you can actually just resize it, which is really nice. And then you can still use it to zoom and kind of see where you are in the project. And they've also sort of just tidied up a couple of things with the clip views. Now in a MIDI clip, the MIDI information inside that clip will be a little bit larger than it was in Ableton 10. And the borders of the clips, of all clips, are just a little bit cleaner and look like they're more accurate. Sometimes I've second guessed myself thinking, is that really on the grid or is it like off the grid a little bit? So that's nice. Also, if you have a trackpad on a MacBook or you use a Surface Pro or something like that with a touch screen, you can hold Alt to zoom in or zoom out with a pinch gesture. And also they've added an option to include return and master effects when you're rendering. So if you're just rendering, let's say this breaks group here, you can turn that on and it will include the return channels and whatever's on the master chain or exclude them. And that's pretty cool when rendering out stems for people to remix your songs. Cool, so that's all the new features in Ableton 10.1. I tried to explain them as quickly as possible because I wanted to shove the information into your brain as efficiently as possible. But feel free to just go back and rewatch the video and kind of use the video as a reference as you try to get used to the new features in Ableton 10.1. I mean, I'm still getting used to Ableton 10, let alone 10.1. So I'll be using this video myself to watch and remind myself of all the new cool hotkeys and whatnot. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And before I go, make sure you go to my website 
website, slink.net, link in the description, where you can purchase my Ableton Essential Toolbox, which is a collection of 25 or 30 uh, racks and instruments and channel strips that I personally use in my projects when I'm writing music. There's kind of something there for everyone and it kind of gets you started using the user library in Ableton, which I think is very underutilized. It's only 10 bucks. I don't have a Patreon page. Well, I do, but I don't really advertise it because I just feel like Patreon's a little bit weird. I'd rather like you get something for your money instead of just throwing money at me blindly for no reason. But I would appreciate the support if you go and pick it up. Thank you so much. All right, peace. Yeah.